All right, um, I'm going to do a video review of some solar generators. But before I begin, I want to let you know uh, kind of what I'm looking for in a solar generator. And that is that I'm looking for a solar generator for long-term uh, power outages. Uh, not just if the power goes out for a few hours, even a few days. In that sort of situation, um, you don't. most people can survive without power or even use a gasoline power generator. Uh, but if the power's out for um, weeks or even months, uh, you're going to need something with a renewable energy source like a, a solar generator. And so that's what my review is based on, uh, what you're going to need to supply your essential needs uh, in that sort of uh, uh, power outage. And before I get into really uh, uh, talking about each individual one, I want to go over kind of the criteria that I'm looking at. The, these are the specs of each generator. Um, the first two here, continuous output and surge output, this is the power that the generator can actually put out. This will be what it can run. Uh, so for example, if you want to run a microwave, you need to look at what the continuous output of the microwave is. So once you start it up and it's running, it'll have a certain output. Usually that's about um, 40 to 100 percent of what the rating on the microwave is. So 1200 watt uh, microwave, you would probably need to um, have a 2400 watt uh, um, inverter to be able to handle that. Uh, and then the surge output is usually when you first start that microwave up, it's going to take about four times the amount uh, as the normal output. Um, and then battery capacity, that's the amount of energy that you have stored in your battery. Uh, so for example, uh, during cloudy weather or nighttime when you're running this generator, it's going to be running solely off the batteries. Um, and how big that battery is will determine how long it's going to run. So if you run in a microwave and you have a little teeny battery, it may only last a few minutes. Uh, if you have a big enough battery, it might last, uh, you know, a day of running the microwave if you needed to do that. And so the size will determine how long you can run, uh, run items. Now the solar panel size, um, once you've uh, say you've used your microwave, whatever you've drained your battery down. Uh, you've stopped using it, this solar panel will um, start charging those batteries back up. And a few hours later you could probably do the same thing again if your solar panel size is big enough. And um, also even while you are using that, uh, this will reduce the amount that you're pulling from your batteries. Uh, so the bigger the solar panel size, the, the longer you can run as well and the, the, the less amount of time you're going to have to wait before times you can use it. Um, now AC output. Uh, let me pull this little chart over here. Um, now this this red line here is a pure sine wave. This is what uh, our grid puts out. That's what all of our appliances are designed to run off of. And with that you don't have any problems. The problem comes in where uh, we use this modified sine wave. Now it was invented just because it's easier to make an inverter that produces this modified sine wave. So it's cheaper. Cheaper to make an inverter that does that. And it will run uh, probably 90% of the things you want to run. Uh, some things it's not going to run, though. It may not start, start a microwave. Uh, uh, sensitive ele electronics, you definitely don't want to run like a CPAP machine or something like that. Um, uh, some, uh, some things that use like an electric motor, like a compressor, uh, refrigerator, stuff like that, sometimes they will not start on this modified sine wave. And then even if you do have uh, something that is running on it, this modified sine wave will run less efficiently and it's going to heat your equipment up and uh, actually destroy your equipment over long term. All right, so really uh, you're a lot better off just getting a, a pure sine wave. You won't run into any problems and things are going to run more efficiently and cooler that way. All right, so that's this one. And then I did a few little things that I'm kind of looking at, like how portable is it? How hard is it to move around uh, long term? How good is this for this long term outage that we're talking about? Expandability. How about, you know, if I need a little bit more solar panels or uh, batteries, how easy is it to expand that and make it a bigger system? And then just an overall score. These are rated uh, um, from 1 to 10. And uh, all right. Now I'm going to go over each individual generator. All right, um, we're going to start out with this Sun RNR generator. 
<clears throat> now these first two generators, the Sun R and R and the UPG, these actually both came up very high when you do a Google search for solar generators. So that's why I wanted to to cover these. Uh, but when you look at this one, uh, the the numbers on it looks pretty good. Uh, 20, 3,500 watt continuous, 7,000 surge. That's enough power to run most appliances you're going to need in this sort of emergency uh, backup situation. It'll run a microwave and uh, pretty much any any appliance in your kitchen. Um, battery capacity 2000 watt hours uh, to me that would be the minimum size of battery you would want if you wanted to run anything like a refrigerator now this will give you uh, two days maybe three depending on how efficient your uh, refrigerator is of power to keep that going when the sun is down like in cloudy weather or something like that um, 280 watts of solar panels this is not bad uh, pretty good power so overall when you get down to this this area it's pretty good uh, one trouble is is they actually use um, these are rooftop solar panels they're they're designed to mount on top of your roof for a grid tire off-grid cabin something like that um, and they're really pretty big and bulky so it makes it a little harder to move and then also you will need to find some way to mount it uh, wherever you're at so that the wind doesn't catch it and blow it over or something like that uh, so they're not really really designed for portability but it does give out pretty good power. The biggest complaint with this generator for me is that it uses the modified sine wave and uh, as we spoke earlier that's just not very efficient and not good for long term. So overall I give this one a 4 on portability, 5 long term and mainly just because of that modified sine wave on this otherwise it would get a lot better score and expandability a 6. The inverter is capable of expanding um, but since it's modified sine wave and because uh, yeah, there's really no, it's not designed to expand the batteries, you'd have to take it apart or something to add those in there. So the expandability is uh, a 6 overall score of 5. Now the UPG, I'm not going to really go a lot over this because it's just really, really small. And for this long-term backup, it just is not capable. The, the battery is only 720 watt hours, 80 watts of solar modified sine wave you know I just just wouldn't recommend this one it's just not big enough or powerful enough alright so let's go over the goal zero the goal zero is actually the most popular generator right now uh, uh, of any of these and so let's take a look at the the numbers here 1200 watts continuous 1500 watt surge now if you look at this this is actually the smallest of any of the three we've covered so far and uh, I actually tested this one out trying to run a microwave on it and it would not run a very small 900 watt microwave and that's just because mostly because of this surge um, the surge just it just didn't provide enough the microwave wouldn't really turn on it was just looking really bad uh, dim light on it and sounded really funny so I had to shut shut this off before I destroyed the either the generator or the microwave so it's not powerful enough to run just something like that it may run a small cooktop stove something like that you might be able to cook a meal on uh, but you wouldn't be able to run a microwave it will run a refrigerator but the battery size is too small to do that long term like I said you want about a 2000 minimum watt hour to run a refrigerator and this is a little small on that side uh, it doesn't come with solar panels so you'd have to buy uh, however many you wanted to go with that. It does have a pure sine wave so that part is good. Uh, the score on this I gave a 7 on portability. It's actually pretty portable. The only real downside is it's got really small tires so it doesn't, or wheels, or little plastic wheels, they won't roll through gravel or grass or dirt or anything like that very good but on pavement it goes pretty good and it's light enough that you should be able to lift it up in your truck if you're taking it somewhere. Um, Long term it only got a 4 and that's essentially because um, mainly because the battery size is, is too small to run a refrigerator. Uh, it also won't run a microwave uh, and it's not very expandable. Um, you, it's not really designed to add batteries to it. You can add more solar panels so I gave it a 2 because you can't expand that part but in order for this to be a long term power outage you need more batteries than that and since you can't add them in there uh, didn't get really long term. Um, overall, it got a 4 out of 10. Alright, so the Energy Kodiak. This one is an interesting generator in, in that it uses uh, lithium ion batteries. Uh, this provides some benefits as well as a couple of negatives. Let's, 
we'll talk about those as we get along here. Uh, first of all, let's look at the output of a 1500 watt continuous output, 3000 watt surge. So this is actually uh, quite a bit better than than the goal zero. Uh, not as good as the other two, but it's uh, it's pretty decent. Um, it will run most uh, type of appliances in your home. It won't run a microwave. Well, it might run a really small one uh, if you got like an 800 watt microwave or something like that, but uh, uh, fairly small for trying to run a microwave. Um, battery size, 1100 watt hours. Uh, again, this is uh, this is actually a little bit smaller than the Goal Zero's battery, so you're not going to be able to run a refrigerator on it um, long term. Run it for a few hours, but if you have any cloudy days, it, that's not going to work. Um, panels come separate, and it comes with a pure sine wave inverter. Now let's look here at the the ratings I gave it for portability. It got a 10 out of 10, and that's due to those lithium-ion batteries. Because of the lithium ion batteries, this thing is very, very light. Uh, in fact, it doesn't have any wheels on it. Uh, it's about 30 pounds. You can just carry that around. It's very, very, very portable. As long as you get some uh, solar panels, it doesn't come with any there. If you get some that are portable and you don't pick, uh, you know, a big rooftop mount solar panel, this would be a very, very portable system. Um, now, long term, uh, it only got a four out of ten, and that's just because. For one thing, the inverter is still a little bit small. You can't run, you know, all your your normal household appliances you would, especially if you need to run a couple at a time. Um, but mainly because of the battery capacity, uh, you can't run a refrigerator or anything like that long term uh, with that battery. And you know, let's go over the expandability uh, with the lithium-ion batteries. Let's read what uh, what they say on their site here. Okay, so they say. They say you can expand it. They say it's simple. If you want to add, or if you want more battery storage, just connect uh, deep cycle batteries to the external battery connection on the side of the Kodiak. Any connected batteries will charge and discharge at the same rate as the internal battery, thus acting as one fully integrated system. Uh, now, I actually have some serious problems with that because lithium ion batteries uh, have a totally different charging profile. Than uh, any other deep cycle battery. So if you get if you just plug a deep cycle battery in there, uh, it's fine to just dis discharge them, you know, running some appliances. But then as soon as you start charging them up, um, you're going to destroy either the lithium batteries or the deep cycle batteries or possibly both of the batteries. Uh, so uh, that's not something you really want to do. So I did not give it very expandability because you can't add deep cycle batteries in that way without causing some serious problems. Um, now I did get a three, a little bit better than the goal zero in expandability because the uh, the inverter is a little bit more powerful and so it's it's a little bit more capable and um, you can also get some uh, solar panels to go with it. Uh, you can get, uh, you know, you can expand that obviously because it doesn't come with any. Um, now also with those lithium ion batteries, there's one other disadvantage to them, and that is that uh, lithium ion batteries cannot be charged when your temperature is below freezing or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, if, you, if you are charging your batteries below that temperature, it's going to shorten the life of them dramatically. And so that, that's another negative to it, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of these other generators don't use the lithium batteries, because a lot of times people will be using solar generators in uh, below freezing temperatures and so that would be detrimental to your battery bank if you needed to do that. Um, so overall this one gets a score of 5 out of 10. Alright, now let's move on to the Point Zero Energy Home Grid 3000. Uh, this one if you look at the specs on here uh, you'll notice that the inverter is very similar in size to the to the Sun r and &R. A little less continuous watt output but quite a bit more of the surge. So this will actually start and run most appliances that you could have. Uh, run a microwave very easily, stuff like that. Um, now the battery capacity is very similar to the size of these two so you'll run into the same sort of sort of issues that um, it's not going to run a, a refrigerator long term. It'll run it fine until you get a cloudy day and then you'll run into problems. Um, uh, pure sine wave 
so so that part is good uh, portability it actually got a little bit higher score than these two um, and that's because it's got some big uh, 13 inch no flat tires so it's going to work a lot better in moving around than, than these two didn't get as good a, in portability as the Kodiak because it's uh, definitely heavier not quite as easy to pick up as that um, but it does come with the portable foldable panel so that's that makes it very portable um, long term it only got a six uh, not a bad score but uh, and the reason why it only got a six is just because the battery and solar is a little bit uh, on the the weak side kind of like these you know it's a little bit low but it it bumped the score up a little bit because the portability uh, you know a little bit higher than these fours over here because the uh, expandability is so much higher uh, this one you can add as many batteries and panels as you need to and uh, and so very easily you could add it and turn this into you know three or four or five times that size of battery bank and solar panels and then you would have a very good long-term backup system and so uh, so that helps out a lot uh, overall I gave it a score of seven which is a pretty decent score and now I want to go into the last one here, the Point Zero Energy Home Grid 5000 HD. And I just wanted to throw this one in there. This is actually a lot bigger than any of these on here as far as any spec on there. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do this is because this is really a near perfect long term backup that we're talking about. Uh, it scored a 9 out of 10. This one has a, biggest, a big enough battery bank to where you could run a refrigerator uh, long term. Uh, doesn't matter if you run into some cloudy weather, you got that battery to, to keep it going multiple days without any sun. Then you got the 400 watts of solar to charge it back up once the sun comes out. Um, it's got 5,000 watt inverter, so it's powerful enough to run pretty much anything in your house. 20,000 watt surge. Pure sine wave inverter, but you know the interesting thing is, is this inverter actually does 110 volt, just like the rest of these that do 110 volt. But it also do, does 220 volt, and this makes it very convenient. Um, if the power does go out, uh, you can disconnect the grid and you can plug this um, directly into any 220 volt outlet in your house, and it'll it'll power up your entire house. Every outlet, every plug, every appliance will be powered just like on the grid. Now, obviously, you're still limited by your battery of 3,000 watt or 3,000 watt hours and 400 watts of solar, so you can't run your house like you normally did. But everything will run. You could run a washer and dryer. That would it would have plenty of power to run a washer and well, not the electric dryer. Electric dryer would run, but it would run these batteries down pretty quick. So if you want to run a dryer, you're going to have to mount a bunch of panels on your roof and add batteries. But it would run a washer. You could wash your clothes, then hang dry them. You'd have plenty of power to do that. Uh, still have power to cook a meal on, keep your refrigerator running. It would do all of that stuff. So 9 out of 10 on the long-term backup that we're looking for. S expandability 10 out of 10. Uh, really, this you can expand it to be a full off-grid system if you want to. So overall, this one got a 9 out of 10. Um, very good system, and that's why I wanted to put that one in there. Um, now, I hope you've enjoyed this this series, uh, or this uh, video here. It, I hope it gives you a good idea of how to do a review for a generator. So if, if there's a one you're looking at that you know I might not have included on here, that's fine. Go ahead and go look up these specs on here. Find out the surge. Uh, continuous output battery capacity solar size whether it's modified or pure sine wave and you can go and look at it and kind of do a review just like I did and see how it stacks up against some of these top generators if you'd like to learn more about solar energy and how backup systems work I'm doing a uh, solar a free solar boot camp video series that will go over a lot more than I could cover in this video including how to size your solar backup systems correctly, how to maintain your batteries to get the most life cycles, how to install various system systems, and tips that I've learned from over 15 years of doing solar. Uh, just click the link to subscribe. Thank you and have a great day.